Greetings, Dan Halligan with a new Obsession video taking a look at the flow in a standard turn. Before we begin, let's take a look at the lay of the land and see what we know about our current situation. We're playing Family York. We're at reputation level 2, position 2. We have a distribution of servants here which tells us a couple things. These three servants in expended service were just used for an activity. The turn before, that footman provided service to an activity and then our butler and housekeeper are uh, lazy. They didn't do anything last turn and they're available for service this turn. Look at our country estate organizer and I think at this stage of the game, judging by the reputation and by the three roses, which indicate that there have been three tiles that have been played, I'm very surprised to see a monument here. So that that could be Yours truly adding a monument so that you can see how a monument impacts a standard turn. <laughs> I'm really suspicious that uh, York at that reputation would have had enough money to not only buy this tile and this tile, but to also acquire a monument, which is generally very expensive. But let's just close our eyes on that one. We have over here our discard pile and we have our active hand here. York has been a little bit thrifty and has accumulated 100 pounds in the form of a 100 pound coin and I think we have a feel for where we're at. The order of play is listed on every player board right here and the first action in the order of play is to rotate service but one of the reasons I've gratuitously added this monument is that I want everyone to see the use of a reminder tile. I created the reminder tile because so many folks would acquire a monument and they would neglect to take the reputation at the beginning of a turn. So if you look at a monument, a monument confers one reputation every turn. That's what's indicated by the circles uh, around the lion rampant, which is our indicator for reputation. And if you're wondering how we know that, we can take a look at a reference aid right here, and it gives the lion rampant with the circles, and it says one reputation every player turn. So this is taken before we start our order of play. And the reminder tile can be taken from the round track and just placed here so that if you get ahead of yourself and start to place an activity tile, you'll see the reminder tile and that'll help with making sure that you get the reputation that is owed for that capital improvement. So seeing this reminder tile and I see this monument, I'm going to take one reputation. So that is one of just two classes of action that will actually precede the order of play at the beginning of a player turn. So now we are into rotate service. When we rotate service, we follow a very specific sequence. Any servants that are located in the servants' quarters are moved over to be available for the current turn. These servants here are then moved from expended service and they rest in the servants' quarters. Please appreciate that this does not mean we have lazy servants who don't want to work two days in a row. This sort of captures, and, and it is covered in depth in the glossary, it captures the logistic challenges of pulling off um, elaborate social events one after the other. House has to be clean, provisions acquired, there's renovations going on, there's illness, there's turnover in staff, and so this basically is a limiting mechanism as far as the frequency with which we're able to access our servants. So back to the order of play. We completed item number one, which is to rotate service. And item number two is to host an activity. And hosting an activity, we come down here and we're gonna take a look at our organizer. Our, our country estate improvement organizer really is the um, sort of the profile of how we're renovating our country estate and trying to get it up to snuff for hosting social events with confidence and, uh, and having our, um, our social overture well, be well received in society and to enhance our reputation, which will be reflected here. So we need to find valid activities to host. And when you want a valid activity on these spaces that we've been working on and we've been renovating, there's a, there's a couple of exceptions that need to be noted. Anywhere that you see the circled arrows, um, it refers to an ongoing ability or an ongoing benefit. 
those are not played. So for example here, this is a serviceability we've talked about. That's a monument which we've seen in action. Those never come up here. We're not hosting an activity. This is an ability for the service staff. This is an enhancement to our reputation because of an investment we made. This is a unique tile. There'll be a separate video on that. And this tile uh, on the front side was an activity of family making plans for the village fair. There will be, again, a separate video talking about the village that's located on the, uh, the family's uh, land. But for right now, it's sufficient to note that that is not a tile that can be played. So that means we only have these tiles where we can host an activity. Oh, but look at this. This tile has a prestige rating of 3. Our reputation is only 2. I need that to be at least equal to that. I need that to be three before I can pull off a pheasant hunt uh, with this tile. So I'm down to these four tiles. And this really is a hiring action. And I don't know that I'm in a mood for a hiring action because the family bonus for York gave me an extra footman and I like to leverage that more robust domestic staff early in the game and we're early in the game. So I'm, I'm down to these three. Now, what I like about this tile hasn't been played. I can increase my victory points from minus two to two by playing that. And I can get my reputation. I get three reputation as a favor there. I can get it to level three, which would give me a path to reaching this improvement tile for the next turn. So I'm sort of looking at a two turn strategy here. So we need to take a look in our active hand and see if indeed we can host a game of whist in the front parlor. Projecting ahead, I do see my housekeeper is going to be available to host that uh, gathering, but I need to look in my uh, active hand and see if I have those two ladies. So I'll bring a close-up on the screen. And what I find interesting here is that if you take a look, uh, we have a prestige guest in the Honorable Albert Plantagenet. Now, if you look over here, we wanted to build a path to a prestige rating 3 activity. And he also has a prestige rating of 3, meaning that he couldn't come to any event this turn. But if we succeed in our objective of getting our reputation to 3, then he can actually be one of the people that come along for the pheasant hunt next turn. And if I take a look at the young lady of the house, the Honorable Marianne Waters, you'll see that there is a York family uh, label, and right below that it talks about an admirer bonus, which every young lady of the house has, which is that if she is uh, seen being paid um, courteous and, and obvious attention at a particular activity by a prestige male guest, it enhances the family's reputation. And here I hearken back to, to the Regency writing. I know this is a Victorian era game, but uh, Jane Austen is near and dear to, to all our hearts. And I, I look back at the Regency era examples of just how extraordinary it was for a humble estate to have um, the young lady being paid mind at, uh, at a ball or at some social event. And so that's the admirer bonus in action. Now that really makes me want to have um, the Honorable Albert Plantagenet uh, be at the pheasant hunt with uh, Marianne Waters. But if you notice, the pheasant hunt requires three gentry. And as a result, if I play the other two ladies, so Miss Agnes Hartstead and the Honorable Charlotte Woods, um, for our game of whist in the front parlor, I, I need to invite a guest in order to accompany Plantagenet and the young lady of the house because there's three guests required for the pheasant hunt. And I do see that the, uh, the pauper who would be attending our game of uh, cards is um, able to invite a guest, but it will cost me a hundred pounds in order to be able to invite her. And fortunately, I do have that. So I'm seeing a great progression here, which is for Miss Harpstead and Miss Woods to uh, come for a game of whist in the parlor. Um, 
you, you might note that I need a lady's maid for Miss Woods, but the good news, and I'll bring down the graphic, is that this servant ability here allows me to take one servant per turn from servant's quarters for a current activity. So I'm just able to pull off all aspects of this activity in sort of a two-turn play. So let's go ahead and do what we planned. So after that long discussion, which is really going to be the most time-consuming part of this video, we've got a strategy. And so we go back to the order of play. Rotate service hosting activity. We are going to host a game of whist in the front parlor. We've taken our reputation for our monument, so we place that there. Then we go to the next line in the order of play, which is to invite guests. We've thought through that strategy, and we are going to invite these two guests. So Ms. Harpstead and Ms. Woods are going to attend whist in the parlor. We go back to the order of play and we provide service. We have the housekeeper providing service here. She's the one who's sort of supporting the activity and, and running the house side of things. And then because of our special ability here in the servants quarters, we're going to provide a lady's maid to Miss Woods uh, in order to complete our service obligation for the activity. Of whist. Back to the order of play, we see that Enjoy Favors is next. And right below Enjoy Favors on the player board, it lists the four possible favors that can come from hosting an activity. And I think it's a, a good clean habit to sort of follow the sequence, which is pounds first. So I look and I observe as far as favors or penalties, is there anything related to money first? And I do see a 100 pound penalty for the pauper, Miss Harpstead, to attend the activity in the front parlor. So I have to pay that to the bank. Then I get to the reputation side of things and I notice that I have two reputation here and three here for a total reputation of five. One, two, three, four, five. So I did more than I would have expected in reaching level three I went quite a bit past level three, enabling Plantagenet and the young lady and a guest, which we're going to get to next, to come along for a pheasant hunt next turn. So we take a look at the favor next in sequence, which is invitations, and we look over here and we see that Miss Harpstead, even though she's of humble origins, she has connections. So we, uh, we're going to go over here and we're going to grab the top card and we find out that Winston Napier Esquire has sort of entered on the periphery of our circle of friends and might attend an activity in the not too distant future as we come recommended by Miss Harpstead. I, I hope you're gonna read these descriptions since I wrote a gazillion of them. <laughs> and I would like to think that someone's going to enjoy the theme. So Winston Napier Esquire, heir to a family fortune, the handsome young Mr. Napier has recently moved to Derbyshire. So. Winston will go into our active hand, available for the very next turn, and if you recall, that's something that we had planned on because of our need for three gentry to go on the hunt. So we come up here, the last favor would be service, but this is not a service activity really. That applies only to when we do a hiring action. So we go to number six, clear board. And clearing the board is pretty straightforward. We take our servants that provided service for that activity and put them in expended service. We take the tile, which was on the front side, and we flip it over till we see the telltale rows that indicate that that has been played. And then we collect our two guests, then we put them in the discard pile, only to be reclaimed when we pass in the future. And there we've completed a standard turn of obsession. Now, a couple of things I would ask you to note. None of our strategic and tactical calculations took into account objective cards, the state of the courtship, or what improvements were available in the builder's market. All of those items would substantially shape the activities we might like to host and probably have changed the tactics that you saw here, which was to go ahead and build out a, an activity path 
that reflects our increasing reputation and keeps my active hands supplied and uh, you know that next event I'll give you a peek see I mean that's going to be a heck of an event we're going to have 300 pounds 400 pounds we're going to have five reputation and two invitations that's a power turn in the second season uh, of a game of obsession but all those other elements were not taken into account but baby steps wanted everyone to see how a standard turn flowed